We use faceting to move light through a gem, to maximize the gem's beauty and value. We use small flat faces or little mirrors to do that. If you've ever played with a laser pointer, you know how tiny changes in angle make a big difference in where the light goes. So we want our mirrors to be very precise. Meet point faceting is a method for building these precise arrangements by mapping one face of a gem relative to the others using reference points called meet points. If you have one flat surface, it's like one wall of your room. You know how far it is from your nose. But that's a large field with a lot of points between bottom and top and a lot of points between left and right. At the place where that wall intersects with another wall, the left-right location is defined. You know the distance from your nose and you know the left-right position. But that corner intersection is still a line with a lot of points between bottom and top. At the place where the ceiling intersects with those two walls, all three dimensions are defined, the distance from you to the wall, the left-right location on the wall, and the up-down location along the intersection of the walls. That's the definition of a meet point, an intersection of any three flat surfaces. We live in three dimensions, and you need three faces to define a location in space. Once you have that, you can add other flat surfaces very precisely. That's the basis for meet point faceting. Using this method, we'll build a standard round brilliant design. First, we'll do it in a traditional way, by cutting the mains first. We'll set the virtual faceting machine to 42 degrees for the eight mains, starting at an index of zero, and watch as the facets are created. The first cut defines the depth, and the second cut creates a line of intersection between the two flats. When the third face is cut, the intersection of faces defines a point in space, at the point of the second face right here. That will be the bottom tip of the stone you will see forming as the other faces are created. Now that all the pavilion faces are cut, we'll set the virtual faceting machine to 90 degrees and define the girdle. The location of these faces are determined by the mast height setting of the machine and if we cut carefully, they'll all be the same depth and the gem will be nice and round. Now that the girdle is complete, we can see that where the girdle crosses the mains, it rises and falls. Jewelers won't like setting a stone like that, and we can improve the light performance by inserting another row of faces. We'll install the break faces on the same indexes as the girdle faces but we need to define how deep to cut these break faces, and we do that by deciding to cut them until they meet the points where the main meets the two girdle faces, here, here, and here. The first break meets where we told it to, right here. By cutting to the same precise depth on the next girdle index, the next face will meet at three locations, the point where the first break meets two girdle faces, here, the point where the next main face meets two girdle faces, here, and the point where the first break meets two mains, right here. This process continues all the way around the stone to complete the pavilion. On the round brilliant, these steps can be done in any order. Mains, girdle, breaks or it can be done mains, breaks, girdle, or it can be done girdle first, then breaks, then bring in the mains to meet the breaks at the girdle. The last one is common in commercial cutting houses where performing jigs automate the precise calibration of round stones. The order is really a matter of preference by the cutter on some designs, but not all. When we transfer the stone to cut the crown, we again use a meet point strategy. The crown break facets are cut to create a specific width of girdle. They're cut at an angle of 41 degrees on the same indexes as the girdle faces. Cutting at the same precise depth allows the next break face to meet the junction of the first crown break with two girdle faces here, and so all around the stone. The first crown main will cut to a depth that meets a point defined by four faces, the junction of crown break faces 
and two girdle faces here. The second crown mane will meet at the girdle in the same fashion and will also meet the point where the first crown mane crosses two crown break faces here. This process is simply repeated. The star faces will meet at points defined by four faces, two break faces and two main faces, here. Finally, the table will meet the junctions between crown mains and crown star faces, here. From the single point of the pavilion, the entire stone was built by arranging new faces precisely according to how groups of three or more previous faces were set. For more information about this process, stay tuned to the Gemstone Artist channel on YouTube, or for hands-on coaching, attend one of our faceting boot camps. Details are on the website at www.gemstoneartist.com.